A Python guide to the Fibonacci sequence. The Fibonacci sequence is a famous sequence of integer numbers. It comes up naturally in many problems and has a nice recursive definition. Learning how to generate it is an essential step in the pragmatic programmer's journey towards mastering recursion. Here, you'll focus on learning what the Fibonacci sequence is and how to generate it using Python. In this course, you'll learn how to generate the Fibonacci sequence using a recursive algorithm, optimize the recursive Fibonacci algorithm using memoization, and generate the Fibonacci sequence using an iterative algorithm. So now you know what's coming up, let's get started. Getting started with the Fibonacci sequence. Leonardo Fibonacci was an Italian mathematician who was able to quickly produce an answer to this question asked by Emperor Frederick II of Swabia. How many pairs of rabbits are obtained in a year, excluding cases of death, supposing that each couple gives birth to another couple every month, and that the youngest couples are able to reproduce already at the second month of life? The answer was the sequence that is seen on screen. The pattern begins after the first two numbers 0 and 1, where each number in the sequence is always the sum of the two numbers before it. Indian mathematicians had known about this sequence since the 6th century, and Fibonacci leveraged it to calculate the growth of rabbit populations. Fn is used to indicate the number of pairs of rabbits present in month n, so the sequence can be expressed as seen on screen. In mathematical terminology, you'd call this a recurrence relation, meaning that each term of the sequence, beyond 0 and 1, is a function of the preceding terms. There's also a version of the sequence where the first two numbers are both 1, like so. In this alternative version, f0 is still implicitly 0, but you start from f1 and f2 instead. The algorithm remains the same because you're always summing the previous two numbers to get the next number in the sequence. For the purposes of this course, you'll use the version of the sequence that starts with 0. Generating the Fibonacci sequence is a classic recursive problem. Recursion is when a function refers to itself to break down the problem it's trying to solve. In every function call, the problem becomes smaller until it reaches a base case, after which it will then return the result to each intermediate caller until it returns the final result back to the original caller. If you wanted to calculate the F5 Fibonacci number, you'd need to calculate its predecessors, F4 and F3, first. And in order to calculate F4 and F3, you would need to calculate their predecessors. The breakdown of F5 into smaller subproblems would look as seen on screen. Each time the Fibonacci function is called, it gets broken down into two smaller subproblems because that's how you define the recurrence relation. When it reaches the base case of either F0 or F1, it can finally return a result back to its caller. In order to calculate the fifth number in the Fibonacci sequence, you solve smaller but identical problems until you reach the base cases, where you can start returning a result. The coloured subproblems seen on screen represent repetitive solutions to the same problem. If you go further up the tree, you'll find more of these repetitive solutions. This means that to generate a Fibonacci sequence recursively, you have to calculate many intermediate numbers over and over. This is one of the fundamental issues in the recursive approach to the Fibonacci sequence. In the next section of the course, you'll see how to generate the Fibonacci sequence recursively using Python. A minimal recursive algorithm in Python. The most common and minimal algorithm to generate the Fibonacci sequence requires you to code a recursive function that calls itself as many times as needed until it computes the desired Fibonacci number.
Inside Fibonacci of, you first check the base case and return an appropriate value if it is one. If the value is not a base case, you would instead return the sum of the values that results from calling the function with the two preceding values of n. The list comprehension at the end of the example generates a Fibonacci sequence with the first 15 numbers. This function quickly falls into the repetition issue you saw in the previous section. The computation gets more and more expensive as n gets bigger. The required time grows exponentially because the function calculates many identical subproblems over and over again. Note that you shouldn't try to use this function at home with a number greater than 50. Depending on your hardware, you might be waiting for a long time before seeing the result, indeed if you make it to the end at all. To calculate f5, Fibonacci of has to call itself 15 times. To calculate fn, the maximum depth of the call tree is n, and since each function call produces two additional function calls, the time complexity of this recursive function is O, 2 to the power of n. For more on time complexity, check out this real Python course. Most of those calls are redundant because you've already calculated their results. F3 appears twice, and F2 appears three times. F1 and F0 are base cases, so it's fine to call them multiple times. As the size of the calculation grows, it's worthwhile to avoid this repetition, and this is what's covered in the next section of the course.